Um, you know, I, re I remember one time that uh, I was, uh, I don't know if we had moved into a new place or something, but uh, I, there was like a mirror that was stuck on the wall uh, that I had to get off. Um, I, I can't really remember the exact situation, but it was stuck on the wall with like this really sticky stuff. I don't know if it was like that two-sided tape, or you know they have those really sticky uh, things now. That it's, and it was a cheap mirror anyway, it's real thin, and uh, not like the real, the real mirrors, you know. And uh, I had kind of this dilemma because I thought, well, if I try to pull it off, it's, it's probably going to shatter. You know, it's, it's almost impossible uh, to, to not to separate the wall and the mirror and, without breaking it and, and creating a mess and having it be real messy and, and dangerous even. Um, and, and I think that uh, I've also had times too where I've tried to pull something off the wall and the, the, the adhesive on the back is so sticky that it like tears off part of the drywall. Yeah, I can see some head nods on that, like I've done that at the patch those holes. Uh, and this morning, you know, we're still going through, through Mark, and we've seen a lot of Jesus' miracles and healings and even exercising demons. Um, and we get to Mark chapter 10 now, uh, and he starts to talk about divorce. Uh, so it's a little bit different than the, kind of what we've been doing in, in Mark. Uh, but what we're going to see today is um, kind, of, kind of the way that divorce, uh, once it's stuck together, it's really not meant to be uh, or excuse me, marriage, once it's stuck together, it's not meant to be pulled apart. And that it can cause a lot of damage and, and there can be a lot of brokenness there. Uh, just like trying to, to peel that mirror off. It, it, that both pieces are going to be damaged. They're never going to be the same again. Um, now even though today's message is um, on a section of passage or a passage about uh, divorce, it really shows, uh, I want us to look at uh, what God intends uh, what God puts together and man not separating that. Um, so in fact, our big idea this morning uh, is that God created us for holy relationships. Let us not defile them. So I'm going to uh, pray this morning and I would love to uh, have you pray for me that God will, will simply speak through me, that we can hear his words. God, we seek you this morning as we study your word. We seek understanding. Uh, God, this can be a, a tough topic uh, for many of us. But God, I pray that you'll give us uh, clarity. Help us to hear your word and to be moved by you. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we're in Mark chapter 10, and I'd like to read just the first couple of verses as an introduction for you. Uh, so Mark 10, verse 1 and 2. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, the crowds of people came to him, as was his custom, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? <clears throat> So we've seen through, what, like the first seven or eight chapters of Mark, that Jesus was really focused on training his disciples, uh, healing people. And we saw back in chapter 8 where uh, he began to prepare them for his upcoming crucifixion. In fact, he would very openly say, listen, I'm going to die soon. Uh, and, and so he has this focus where he's moving toward the cross. But he still continues his ministry that as he comes across crowds of people, he continues to teach them. And as is par for the course, when something comes up or when he's pressed about something, he'll teach about that subject. Now, it's been, you know, it's been a few weeks since we've seen the Pharisees and the teachers of, teachers of the law try to trip Jesus up, <clears throat> but our old friends are back again. And so when the Pharisees, excuse me, the teachers of the law come to Jesus, um, their intent really isn't too much to bring up the topic of divorce, but rather to uh, try to catch him in saying something that is not agreeable. In fact, in this, in this time, uh, in this setting right now, uh, there's kind of two different, two different uh, schools of thought among divorce. Uh, there's one group of scholars and priests that when they look back at Deuteronomy 24.1, they think uh, that it is saying uh, that, that a man could divorce his wife if, uh, or, or vice versa, um, if the person is unfaithful. And then there's another other school of thought that thinks, well, if there's anything unpleasing, then they could get a divorce. And so it's a very op wide open kind of interpretation, um, like where the other one is very specific, just limited to one exception. 
And so, then raising the question to Jesus, you know, what does God say about divorce? They're thinking that no matter which way he goes with, you know, at least half the group was going to have ammunition against him uh, to try to, uh, to defame him. And so, both of these groups look back at Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 24.1, which we'll look at here in a minute. But the idea here is that they are basically attacking Jesus. They're trying to trip him up um, and, and find reasons uh, to make him look bad. So let's continue on in verses 3 through 5. And this is Jesus' response uh, to their question. Their question was, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus' response in verse 3, What did Moses command you? He replied, They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. Okay, so we have, uh, and here it, it doesn't say Pharisees, it says the teachers of the law. So the teachers of the law come before Jesus and they, they press him with a question. And so Jesus responds with, well, what does the law say? Okay, they're the teachers of the law, they should know this pretty well. So he's kind of taken their angle. In fact, the way Jesus worded it was, he says, what did, what did Moses command you? And they respond with, well, Moses permitted this. And then Jesus says, well, well Moses allowed you to do that because your hearts were hard. Now, if you kind of look at this, there's a focus on the law and, and on Moses. And we're going to see Jesus kind of flip the script here in a few minutes on that. Uh, but first I thought maybe we could go, go back to Deuteronomy 24.1 uh, and look at this verse. I'll at least read it for you. So Deuteronomy 24.1, and this is Moses' instructions to the Israelites. He says, If a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce and gives it to her and then sends her out from his house and it kind of goes on to give some, uh, some other stipulations or possible scenarios uh, of what could happen from that. But his focus here is that if a husband finds something indecent about the woman that he married, that he could write her a certificate of divorce. Now, as I, as I studied this, because it's interesting because two groups look at this word, look at this, they look at that word indecent and one group says, well, that means unfaithfulness. Marital unfaithfulness. Another group thinks, well, that's indecent. Like they just, you know, there's just something that's, that's displeasing or, or not quite the way that the husband would like it. And so I, I looked into many other uh, translations um, and I found that the word indecent, while it's in the NIV that I just read, uh, it's also in the Christian Standard Bible and the New American Standard Bible. But I also like the King James. King James uses the word um, unclean. It's a very good... Uh, you know, Old Testament Israel, uh, Israelite word of being unclean. Uh, the New Living Translation says shameful. Uh, the the uh, contemporary English version says disgraceful. Uh, improper is the word that's used in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So as we look at these words, you know, indecent, unclean, shameful, disgraceful, uh, improper. As I look at these, I, I see uh, like an immoral undertone. That there's something that is morally, morally wrong. Uh, as I was studying this, um, I, I, sometimes I like to check out um, other pastors' thoughts on it. And the way that one pastor described these two different groups was the one said, um, if, they're married, if they are unfaithful in their marriage, then you can divorce. And the other group was like, well, if there's anything that was displeasing to the, to the husband. So it's like, you burnt my eggs this morning, you're out. They even gave the example of, it's like, well, you failed to be as pretty as this other girl that I saw, so you're out. And, and it just seems so crazy that you can have two, such two, two different drastic extremes drawn from the same, the same verse. And that's why I studied into it more. Uh, but to me, I, I see this as a, as a moral issue. So what Moses did was he uh, established this guideline uh, with, with the divorce that was rampant among the Israelites. And, and he did this because of their hard hearts. We see that if we want to go back to, uh, to Mark, uh, verse 5. He says, It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law. 
Now, one thing that I think I would like to point out here is that uh, you notice so far the focus has been on Moses, that Moses uh, wrote this, that, that Moses uh, came up with this idea. And to me, it's, it's not so much of a command, uh, command excuse me, but as much as it is a concession. Uh, Moses promoted, uh, excuse me, permitted divorce as a way to, to keep it in, in check. You see, divorce was rampant because the Israelite men were just at will divorcing their wives for burnt eggs <laughs> or for any reason that they, could, that they could dream up. And so it was just, uh, it, was unramp it was rampant and it was not what God had wanted. Uh, the, the idea of, of the, the unclean or the indecent stipulation uh, l that he put on limited what they could divorce their wives for. So it, it seems a little bit funny because we could first look at this and say, well, Moses says that they can divorce their wives for anything unpleasing. But what he's doing, he's, he's actually limiting what they can do. Uh, they actually have, have to have a real solid um, reason for wanting to divorce their wives. So he is actually constricting um, all the rampant divorce that was going on among them. So let me give you a quick uh, application before we move on uh, and, and follow this topic a little bit further. God desires that we enter into the marriage relationship uh, as holy and clean. We, we see these ideas uh, of indecent and being unclean and disgraceful and improper and shameful. And just to clarify, when, when I say that we, God wants us to enter uh, our, our, a marriage relationship, it's not just you know, the getting hitched part. It's, it's, the, it's the marriage, it's the relationship that we keep that holy and clean. You know, for many of us, we're already married, and so we're thinking, well, okay, God wants us to be holy when we get married. That, does, that doesn't apply to me. But we enter into a relationship, and that lasts a lifetime. You know, we must strive to maintain holiness uh, now, not just as one person, but as two people that have become one person. And if you tell me that it's easier for two people uh, to move along and be holy than it is for one, then I, I'm just going to say that you're crazy right now. Sometimes we have a hard time uh, agreeing on where to eat. <laughs> um, we, we must keep our marriage covenant holy, uh, obeying all of God's commands for us. And that's you know, really what Moses was, was getting at there. But I really like what Jesus does next. Uh, and let me read for you verses 6 through 9 so we can talk about this. Starting in verse 6, it says, But at the beginning of creation, this is Jesus speaking, But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. So the teachers of the law come to Jesus with a law question. What does, what does the law say about this? Or what does God think about this law? And Jesus says, well, let's look at the law. And I think, I think it looks somewhat flawed. You know, God's original design wasn't for them to be divorced at all. But Moses gave them a concession and he, it was a good thing by limiting uh, that rampant divorce that they had. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what Jesus does is, is he kind of, he answers their question by saying, like, listen, you guys are so focused on what Moses is looking at, but let's look at what God says about it. Let's look at what God thinks about it. We kind of have this, uh, this joke in my house um, where, and maybe you've experienced this, where you ask somebody a question, it's like, well, would you rather do this or you want to, want to do that? <clears throat> and they kind of give a vague answer and they're like, oh, yeah. You know, it's kind of a confusing, like, well, wait, which one did you just say yes to? And so we have this joke in our house where we kind of uh, define that by, we just say, it's like, red or blue? And we're like, yes. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, your answer is as clear as mud, right? And to me, this is kind of what Jesus did. Not that he gave uh, an unclear answer, but what he was saying is like, you guys are debating over red or blue. And he's like, listen, it's neither one. 
You know, let's, let's look at God's intent, not just what Moses uh, instructed his people at that time because of their hard hearts. <clears throat> we see in verse, uh, verses 6 and 7 where Jesus refers back to some verses in Genesis. When he said that God made them male and female, he's referring to Genesis 127. Also from 127, he says uh, that men and women were made to be together, that they are made to be one. Uh, Genesis 2.24, we see there in Mark 10.7, where he says that they are to leave their mother and father, and they are to become one flesh. And so Jesus is saying, like, okay, we're, you're debating over what Moses thinks about divorce. But let's look at what God's plan was. God's plan was that I, I'm going to join these two things together, these two people together, for a holy purpose, for a relationship. And it's like that mirror. If we try to separate that mirror from the wall, it's just going to shatter. It's going to be broken, and it's going to be messy. And we might even we might damage the wall, and it's just not going to be a good thing all around. Verse 9, therefore what God has joined together, let man not separate. Our, our, this leads us right into our application. <clears throat> um, because God created us for marriage, relationship, uh, and covenant. He, he made men and women to go together. That, that men and women were designed for each other. And, and you know, metaphorically, emotionally, physically even. You know, God's, God's design is for them to be together. And to even be, to become one. Now when I say this, this point, God created us for marriage, relationship, and covenant, uh, I can also speak to, to those that might be single. There's an image in the Bible often um, where they talk about the church as being the bride of Christ. That, that us as the body of Christ, as believers, we are to be in, in a marriage relationship with Christ, that we become uh, basically one with Him. You know, we were uh, created for holy relationships, and not just marriage, marriage relationships, but holy relationships with each other. That as fellow brothers and sisters, we have a, a commitment or an a, or agreement with each other to build each other up and not tear each other down. Um, our faith in Christ um, is a covenant between us and God. A covenant that is sealed by His blood, but one where we commit uh, our lives in service to Him. Another application I'd like to point out from this section is that we must be wary not to undo God's commands with our ways. You know, as I said before, this is on divorce, and we can see that what God has joined together as far as a married couple, that if we try to separate that, it's just going to be um, very... Uh, difficult. It's going to be uh, really impossible. Let me finish up here with the, the last couple of verses, 10 through 12. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. I think the, we kind of have one basic idea here in these two verses, but I think the idea is that what God is saying is like, listen, I have joined these two people together, and they will not be separated. Now, I, I don't care if you move out of the same house, if you um, have a piece of paper that you sign, or if the government gives their stamp of approval saying, yep, divorced. God still sees them as one. They're joined together, and, and so for even a divorced person to go uh, and to marry again, brings the sin of adultery. I think the idea that we can see here is, is simply that what God joins together, man cannot separate, even though we, we attempt to do it sometimes. This is God's original plan. The, the ideal is that we do not divorce. I know that Moses gave them a concession because 
Uh, it was so, such a rampant thing in their time. And what he did was a good thing to move it toward God's ideal. And I think that's the concept that I would love for you to, to grasp this morning, is that we uh, are to pursue God's ideal. I know that we're going to fall, fall short. I know that we sin, and, and we're going to not have, our lives are not going to be as perfect as he, as he wants them to be, as he desired or originally had planned. But that's our goal. We need to move toward that. In fact, as I think about any sin, I think that the point is that because of sin in relationship with Christ, we need to seek that restoration. That the, the point, uh, we, should, we should seek to reach God's standards. But because we're human and because uh, we sin, um, we need to, to seek that restoration and that forgiveness and that healing. Now, you can't put that mirror back together again. It's broken. And I think that with, with any sin, there are consequences. And forgiveness and restoration doesn't put the pieces back together. It's still a consequence. It's still there. You, you can't get rid of the consequences. But you can be restored in fact, our last point this morning is that God's original plan was perfect and we must seek restoration when our sin separates us from Him. So if divorce is something that has happened in your life or uh, really, I, I would say insert any sin in there. For any sin that we have in our lives, we must seek restoration with Christ, with our relationship with God. That with any sin, it separates us, it pushes us further away from God's ideal plan. And so we must seek forgiveness from God that we might be restored in relationship to Him. Now this was a, an interesting uh, passage for me to, to kind of study and, and teach on because it's not one that I'm well versed in. And, and I know there, there's a lot of questions and, and divorce is fairly rampant in, in our world today. And I know that there's a lot of tough questions that come up. Uh, in, in fact, I know that there have been people that have posed the question because, uh, to me, I, I think the Bible pretty clearly says um, that God's ideal plan, that God's intention was that we should not be divorced. And, and therefore, I, I think that divorce is a sin. But I do believe that He restores us from that sin. And the, the one exception, of course, is for marital unfaithfulness. Um, but I know that then people bring up uh, some really good questions. Especially if someone says, well, okay, what if a believer is in a relationship with an abusive spouse? Well, well what then? Oh, they're not married, married and faithful, but how could not, God not let them out of that commitment, out of that? Out of that? And, and to me, you know, with my own human Passion, logic, I would and, think, well, and, man, get out of there. Yeah, of course. But I, I can't really back that up. I, I can't find that in Scripture. I can't back that up with Scripture. So there's, there's so many different areas and, and questions that we could ask that, would, that could really get involved and even argue over. And so it is a tough topic, and, and I really just kind of introduce it this morning. Uh, in fact, I'm going to kind of extend this conversation a little bit um, into Thursday uh, at our Thursday night Bible study we have uh, uh, at 6.30. Uh, I want to focus on these same 12 verses here in chapter 10. And I have a lot of tough questions that we can ask. And we can search through the answers together. And I have some other scriptures I think could be related. And it's such a tough topic even for me that I would love for us to struggle together with that. And just trying to, to seek what's got, see what God's will is on some of these things. So uh, it, it should be a very interesting Bible study. I invite you all out for that. But um, this morning... We want to look at God's plan. The, he, he, his, his ideal, um, and you know, the, the, the way He developed, the way He designed us was um, to have relationship with Him, with each other, with our spouses. That is holy and pleasing to Him. And, and any sin separates us from that. And we need to be restored to that. In fact, this morning, if you... Um, do not have a relationship with Christ, if you haven't started that, or if maybe it needs to be restarted, then, then I want to talk to you. 
uh, I want to encourage you to, to seek Him and to pursue Him and begin that relationship with Him that you might be restored uh, back to God's original plan.